Okay. Uh, dear attendants, uh, welcome to second uh, international conference on energy and sustainable build, build, uh, environment. Uh, unfortunately, due to pandemic, we have to hold our conference online. Thank you very much for your participation. In this section, uh, includes four distinguished professors' uh, uh, presentation. Uh, firstly, uh, Professor Moriria Pinto from Portugal, uh, Professor Abdullah Zarov from Algeria, uh, Professor Hasila Jeremy from Malaysia, Professor Menisia Yakut from Turkey. I would like to open a speech about conference topics. Yes. Uh, along with the uh, development of technology, industrialization and rapid uh, population growth have increased and uh, the energy demand. The awareness of the energy crisis has led to searchers to search for new solutions and use new technologies in this area. Renewable energy has an ex extremely important place in energy requirement of the countries with domestic uh, resources. Reducing the external uh, dependency, diversity, the resources, and ensuring sustainable energy usage and minimizing the damage to the environment as a result of energy consumption. Today, approximately 20% uh, of uh, world's consumed energy is supplied from renewable sources. Despite the high level of depends on fossil fuels in current situation, the use of renewable energy has been increasing steadily over the years. The conventional energy sources that already supply most of the energy demand. However, it is estimated that fossil fuels especially uh, petroleum will be consumed in the next 100 or 200 years. In order to able to produce solutions for this situation, it is necessary to carry out many research development and production development projects related to both conventional energy sources and also alternative energy sources. The bulk uh, environment is one of the areas that has been present in the highest rates of primary energy consumption worldwide. The need for a more sustainable build environment in, in account of reducing energy consumption and emission has become a core use issue in the focus on of energy and environment debates and policies which are requiring platforms constantly to share research and findings. You know, what we approach new technology and methodology. Therefore, uh, the second uh, international conference on energy and sustainable built environment entitled as Live Green Stay on Earth is organized in order to bring together the fellow academicians, researchers, scientists, practicing arts, architecture and engineering on energy and sustainable built environment. The conference will provide this international forum for experts to present and discuss their new ideas, research, results, application, and experiments in the file. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, first, uh, we begin our session conference with Professor Moria Pinto with speaking about the power of color presentation. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I give you uh, authorization. Yes. Yeah. I give you post. Okay. Everything is okay. No, it's um, disabled from your side. You need to give me authorization. Uh, okay. Okay.
Okay. Ah, now yes. Yes. So. So, can you see? Yes, everything's okay. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say thank you for this invitation one more time and to be here with all of you. It's always a pleasure. And I really miss uh, our last conference in, uh, in Istanbul. It was um, a very a great moment. And I'm sure that today it will be, again, one great moment to talk about energy. And because of that, well, as you know, I'm like an outsider because I'm an architect. So I'm not like all of you, but my research field is about colors and the mood that colors provoke on people. And that's why uh, I propose the subject about the power of colors. So it's like the energy that colors could give to people. Sorry, just because I have my face in front of my ear. Okay. Just try to find the, the right place. So when we talk about energy, we all remember in the moment about electrical energy first and then about all the other kind of energies that we know. Energies caused by fossil fuels, from the wind, from the force of the waves, from the sun, from the gas, etc. But about colors, almost no one talk about it. But we know that colors imply an influence in the mood of people and because of the use of light, colors can, can transmit some kind of energy for human being. So colors also becomes a vehicle for the dissemination of visual energy. We know that visual energy is a form of energy that relates directly to the way how human being moves and the way how we have some kind of feelings, some kind of sensations. And we know that that kind of colors and the movement of colors around us can improve our emotional capacity to see the world. This is a way of energy. So when you talk about colors, it's quite impossible to don't talk about perception. And perception is nothing more than C. And C means energy and power means feeling. Of course, colors are linked to the light. This is obviously because without light, we cannot see the colors and we cannot see the world. But colors are able to transmit feelings. For example, if we can think about food, just to make a link, when we see a very colorful food, that kind of food is much more attractive. And why? Because it gives us some kind of good energy and we are attracted to eat that food. So perception is the way as a human being understand the environment around him. This understanding is made, of course, according to their own culture. So the way how we see the world, it's, it's based on our culture. It means that the perception that I have about something, it's different from my side, from your side. But anyway, all of us, we interact in this case with colors. The color has the ability to define the mood of each one. That's why some people dress in some, in some way and other people dress in a, in a different way. That's why some people prefer some kind of colors and others, they prefer the other colors. So the energy that it is transmitted by colors are always symbolic. And this is very interesting to, to talk about it because this is energy, but this is an intangible energy. It's an energy, energy that we cannot measure, but all of us, we feel it, but we cannot measure. 
So colors also influence the direct the, and direct people to have certain behaviors. That's why, for example, in retail design, some shops use different colors to sell different products. So colors attract people to do different things. For example, uh, red, uh, red uh, in um, China means something like good energy, happy energy. For example, orange in Japan means warm and invite people for joyful. So it's like more calm and good luck energy. Yellow, yellow, it's a color for optimism. So it's like something bright for us. And blue, blue promotes rest and calm. That's why the majority of people prefers blue. So blue is like that kind of color that in general, everyone likes. And there are many other colors, of course. This is just examples of energy that colors spread. And of course, colors are divided in levels of energy. We know that the hottest, hottest colors, like red, for example, they are more active, exciting, and they are more vibrant, like violet, for example. But the cold colors are more calming, more gentle, and more peaceful. So this is very well known. We can feel it, but we cannot measure in percentage. We cannot measure in numbers. That's why this kind of energy, it's an intangible energy. So in general, the convey, uh, uh, they propose, let's say, optimism and passion when we are talking about warm colors, but we can talk about calming and relaxing when we are talking about cold colors and they can be much more powerful if we are talking, for example, about the gray or the brown because they are neutral colors. So they are connected or linked to sophistication. So when we talk about colors, we, we know that 85% of shoppers, they use colors to induct people to buy different things. 90% of the product is based on the color itself. And colors can increase awareness around the brand awareness around 80%. So imagine we are talking about 20% of, of brand and the rest is about the color. The urban environment use of colors has always been an important and remarkable element. We know in all places all over the world, colors are in all buildings. Color has always been applied in architecture, in cities, inside and outside of the houses. For example, when we think about, um, let's say, some kind of heritage monuments, that nowadays we see them like white, but in the past, they was covered full of colors because colors interact with people. In architecture, for example, this is an example of a very simple uh, uh, architecture layout. But just because it's painted with yellow, it improves the spirit of the place and gives some different lecture, some, some different way to see the surroundings, just because they put yellow. Otherwise, it will be just white houses and no one will care about it. For example, here, this is a normal, very normal offices, buildings with full of glasses, but just because these buildings are covered with colorful glasses, they are like a hot spot of energy of that place. They are a hot spot of meeting point. Everyone knows that they work on the colorful building and the colorful building is like the main uh, uh, meeting point, the main hot spot of that surroundings. Everyone can say, oh, I live on the left side of that building. I live in front of that building. I live on the back side of that building. So these buildings are hot spots. And just because they are using and wearing colors. Colors, for example, in Portugal, they are also used 
in tiles. Because in Portugal, it's very traditional to use tiles. And as you can see, tiles cover some buildings and some constructions and improve, let's say, the spirit of the place and give some energy to that place. This kind of energy, it's an energy of good mood. Here, you can see a very old house, nothing in special, just a few doors and three windows. To tell you the truth, it's a very ugly house, but each year, each year, the owners of this house, and I'm telling you that this is really each year, they paint the house in a different way. And just because of that, they could improve the mood of people. Many people go there just to see how it is the painting of this here. This house appear in many magazines in Portugal, you know. So at this moment, it's like a hot spot of the city and people go there to take pictures. So improve the spirit of people, improve the mood of people. And with that, they give good energy to the place. And here you can see a red flower. So we are talking about a gray and um, very old heritage castle. But when you look to this, your eyes goes directly to the red point. So the red point, it's a flower and give you some energy. So this flower, it's for the picture, it's almost more important than the building. This flower, it's just a simple point of energy, but everyone looks to there. So if I want to talk about advertising, maybe I will put my text near this flower because everyone looks to there. So as a conclusion, Colors are organized according to the symbolic energetic profile as they correspond to sensations that vast majority of people feel according to the color they are observing. The balance between visual and verbal leads to a closer interpretation regarding our individual experience and always influences our individual energy. So one thing is what we talk, the other thing is what we see. But when we see, we understand the, the, the place because of the colors. So thank you. I hope um, I was on, on time. And well, I really know that uh, talk about colors in a conference about energy maybe be a little strange. But you know, with colors, we really feel good or bad energy and colors can really improve the spirit of the place. And this is an intangible energy. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, this is very excellent and a different study. Uh, and also color is very uh, important for as life and also of how color is influenced to me, especially. Uh, can you explain uh, about uh, color influence to uh, people's life again? You are asking me to explain how colors yeah, yes, yes. interact with people. Yeah, yeah, yes. Like okay. you. So uh, uh, in reality, you know, many, many people already have done research about colors. And since the Bauhaus time, for example, but since the beginning that the meaning of colors are different between countries and between cultures. For example, for example, there are a kind of colors that they improve good energy. And if I will ask you to tell me a color that gives you the sensation of happiness, I'm quite sure that you will tell me that it is yellow because almost of grown up people always say that yellow, it's a happy color. But then if I will tell you, but why it is yellow? I'm quite sure that you will tell me, oh, because yellow, remember me the sun and remember me, uh, um, 
well, good places and it's a hot place. And then I will tell you, okay, but the sun is not yellow. The sun, it's almost red. Yellow, it's the color that comes to the land. So it's the light. And, well, to tell you the truth, the sun burns the skin. So it's dangerous. So why yellow is a happy color? And then people start thinking, oh, maybe you are right. Maybe yellow is not so happy. And, well, we have done a research with children, for example, and children, many, many times they say, for example, that blue is much more happy than yellow because yellow for some kind of children, it's irritating because it's too shining, too bright, you know? And mm -hmm. when I ask them to, to tell me, oh, what color you should put in a triangle, they always tell me to put yellow because the triangle, it's, uh, well, it's more nervous, you know? Well, this is like, a, um, we are talking about se semiotic point of view uh, about uh, the meaning of colors, but it's very interesting to understand anyway, that colors always improve our spirit. Mm -hmm. And just for, for you to know, for example, all ears, there are two colors for the ear that everyone follow. For example, the colors of this here are the yellow and the gray. So for the year 2001, you know, it, the colors are the yellow and the gray. So it's very nice because you will start to see in fashion, in all places that people will start to wear, you know, yellow and gray. So, well, colors really improve the, the place. And for example, if we are talking about solar panels, or about um, uh, solar energy, we know that the solar panels, they can, they can have, for example, red or blue or dark gray, you know, but it depends of the place where they are because of the amount of energy and the sunlight that is uh, coming to that panel. So one more time, the color is used, is used to attract the energy from the sun, for example. So colors make part of our life. That is the only thing that I can tell you by sure, you know, but we are talking about opinions and we know that uh, we can have our own opinions about this. This is very subjective, but it is very good to, well, to know about it and to think about it just a little. Thank you very yeah. much. Is there any question? Uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, I, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your participation, uh, first of all. Uh, it's kind of really interesting topic for us. And uh, actually, it's not uh, so much interesting because um, uh, we, all, we, have, we all know uh, there's a uh, relationship between uh, the um, colors and also buildings. But uh, so far, we generally um, ignore this fact. Uh, but uh, with this presentation, I think uh, I started to think about it again. Um, thank you for this participation for that uh, for a reason. Uh, I have a question. And uh, two years ago, uh, you said that uh, I'm plan I'm planning to develop an application re regarding to this. I mean, uh, just depending on the surroundings, environment, and the people's energy level, it, this kind of application shows yes. us this truth. Uh, Yes, so that application is on the way at this moment. Of course, we always have problems about budget, about money, because the research center uh, needs to, well, I need a finance around 25,000 euros to produce the application at this moment. And just to have an idea, I only have 5,000 euros. So I don't have almost nothing to, to produce the, 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 let's say the final, the, final, um, the final application. But the application, we already have a short movie about that explaining how it will works and we have done the research only with um, with the, the main colors like the the yellow the blue and the red yeah. but at this moment we are trying to make with the secondary colors also because mm -hmm. the the world of colors it's not only three colors it's full of colors we can go until the three dimension of the colors mm -hmm. and because of that we are at this moment doing the, the research with the other colors, but the, the process is on the way 
it's yeah. not True. it's not packaged it's still working and because, I, because uh, two years ago after the presentation I, when i heard this i got excited suddenly i i really don't i did i really didn't understand the reason and after this presentation i asked this question and uh, you said uh, the same thing but hopefully uh, we we gotta see this application on our phones I really, I really hope so. You know, it's not my fault. It's the fault of all the research <laughs> centers. They don't have money, and uh, well, we need to find <laughs> some <laughs> kind of yes, yeah, some kind of companies. But anyway, the most important thing is that this is on the way, and yeah. it's something that it's not storage. It's to proceed because I can feel that many people have mm -hmm. interest on that problem. Is that, for example, I had uh, one company from Lithuania who really would like to participate on this project, but the conditions, it was like, okay, you give me the project and you are, you, and you are out. So, well, <laughs> I, I believe it's not fair, so I'm not going to proceed on that way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like this, I'm, I'm just a researcher, I'm not a businessman, and it's quite complicated for me to manage this kind of situation, but I'm very happy that you remember me because I'm not seeing your face <laughs> now, but I remember you also. You was more or less on the middle of the amphitheater. Yeah. And I remember to talk with you about this. And mm -hmm. it's like, a, he was like a hotspot of the day, you know, because <laughs> you improved my mood uh, with uh, your questions because I was like, wow, someone understood me finally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for for your answer, it's good to hear that also. Thank you for and, your answer. And I will be very happy if, you, if in somehow or some way you would like to join, to join in this project, because we really need people on this team. You know, we are researching in all over the world. Each time I go to some place for a conference, I always mm -hmm. make a research with kids and with students and with grown-up people about this subject, and I'm input more information on on the let's say on the algorithm because the algorithm is the, the key for, for the, the application. Yeah, but we already have a prototype. So mm -hmm. I will be happy to show you if, you if you would like, maybe later, or if you will, will contact me. Of course, uh, I'm going to contact pleasure. with you. I'm going to contact Thank you. you. Thank much, you for uh, Professor. Everything is very good. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Secondly, uh, I want to this Professor, uh, up. Abdullah Zarok, which study about general review of bold building energy simulation software. Uh, Abdullah Zarok from Algeria. Thank you very much. You hear me? Yeah, uh, everything okay. depends on you, Professor. Okay. okay. Can, can, yeah. I ask, can I ask the professor just a small question? Yeah. Can I ask the professor from Portugal just a uh, small question? Yeah, yes, okay, yes. Okay. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, I uh, give some courses about lighting for architecture students. So how to calculate uh, the number of uh, lamps, uh, uh, the effect of colors and so on. And we have something which it's always for me, I cannot explain it. We call it core temperature. And they give uh, uh, a range for comfort, for uh, light comfort, which is from 3,000 Kelvin to uh, nearly 5,000 Kelvin. I cannot explain this to my student. I say that there is this problem of uh, uh, temperature of color. When you are speaking now about energy, does this have a link with the temperature of the color? Well, in my opinion, yes, because, well, you know that in the ergonomic point of view, the, the most uh, correct color for lights are the, the color of sunlight. So that's why when we are using LED light, you know, the colors are so white and people are not enjoying to have that kind of lights inside of the house. And that's why, for example, I don't know if you know the brand Osram. Osram? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a German brand, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's no, why you know, they, yeah. they, they create the sunlight with LED light, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if we will use the color of the sun inside of our houses for our eyes 
and for our mood, we will feel much better. So let's say that uh, when we talk about temperature, temperature of the light, it should be equal to the sunlight because that it is the ergonomical color. It's the color that we don't feel, but we feel good because we don't think we are comf comf comfortable with that colors. So each time we change the rhythm of the colors, and that's why lead are very good because they don't shake, you know, they, are, they don't do this. We don't feel so tired, but problem of lead, it's because they are very white colors. And this is very bad for our eyes and for our mood. Even the way how we see the things inside of our house, we see with different colors because it's too white. We should use always the color of the sun inside of the house. This is very important. And for architects, it's like this. For sure, it's not the first time that you enter in a shop and you want to buy something. And if the shop have too much white color in the lights, you know, you have difficulty to understand what you are buying. And sometimes you, you yeah. go and you go to another place to see better what you are buying. You know, it's because of that. Because if shops will use the color of sun, it, everything will be perfect. I'm almost sure about that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very you. much again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I? Okay. Uh, evet, uh, uh, yes, uh, Professor Abdullah. Yeah. We are listening to your presentation. Thank you very much. Sorry to be uh, late also. I have uh, uh, Professor Milik knows some problems, some personal problems uh, with me. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, am, I apologize to be a little bit uh, late. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> my work or my uh, this uh, paper, my it, it is a draft of paper. I am trying to uh, finalize to send it somewhere, but uh, it is a review on uh, whole uh, building simulation programs. Yes. Uh, when I say whole building, uh, because a uh, lot of uh, programs, lot of softwares are dealing some of them with the lighting, with electrical, some of them with heating problems, some of them, but uh, softwares that are dealing for uh, most of the kind of the energy used in the building, such uh, as uh, electrical energy, uh, thermal energy, uh, heating system, cooling system, and so on. Uh, I tried to uh, to uh, okay, I try to uh, reset to look through every country uh, for uh, different uh, softwares and uh, just I uh, as uh, I I found nearly about three hundred and sixty five softwares that they are telling uh, that they deal with the whole uh, energy simulation, pro, uh, the, whole sin the whole building energy. I myself tried, uh, I checked with uh, some American softwares like Energy Plus, which is largely used in uh, academic writings. Uh, I checked it also with the eQuest which is a quick uh, energy simulation tools, which is same, let's say the same company, which is Doe, Department of Energy. Uh, it's, uh, I checked also with these uh, programs, with uh, uh, one programs I have been used and when I was in Riga and Lata, which is called the uh, Energy Audit or Energy uh, Audit. And uh, I can, uh, say, uh, okay, I collected most of some of them. Some of these programs are free uh, of charge to download. And, uh, ma but most of them are, uh, you should pay for them. And as uh, our previous professor speak about financial problems, I was 
uh, emphasizing about those that I can download without paying uh, any charges. And uh, I can, uh, for the first uh, view, for the, for example, energy, in energy audit or energy audit, which I used uh, in Latvia, uh, it seems that uh, it doesn't take into uh, account uh, a lot, okay, which are a lot of parameters which I, when I use as an engineer to calculate uh, the energy demand, the energy uh, uh, of the buildings, for example, with architect, uh, these softwares did not uh, tell anything about the building orientation is the main building facade orientation. Is it oriented where the north, where the, toward the north, toward the south, or which is very important because, uh, for example, those uh, with main facade uh, uh, face the south, they got a lot of energy in winter, uh, sun uh, energy, and uh, also they did not say a lot of things about uh, the altitude of the climatic zone and the area where the building is. They just use the building, they just deal with the building uh, envelope, with the building insulation, with the heating systems, uh, air conditioning systems and so on, and then give at the end uh, statement uh, this building is uh, uh, good or bad with this uh, scale of uh, like uh, we have and uh, refrigeration A, B, T, C, D and so on. And uh, about energy plus, energy plus is more used uh, in uh, academic writing but we, myself when I checked it with some results with the same building uh, by equest, I found a very large difference between uh, the recorded values of uh, energy consumption and uh, the simulation one. And sometimes it reaches 50%, which is too much. And I cannot understand, sometimes I cannot understand why most, the, most of the people uh, and academic writing, they use uh, Energy Plus uh, more than uh, Equest. When the, both of them are from the same, let's say, from the same uh, Department of uh, Energy of the United States. Uh, most of the countries, uh, I have a resume, uh, I try to uh, uh, resume. Uh, so, uh, countries, USA and the, and the USA, the total schools we are dealing with the whole building in it, up to 161, 67 are free of charge, 67 are free of charge, among them are Equest Energy, please heat uh, and uh, other. Uh, and UK, there is the total softwares are 24, and uh, the free software are for those British one with, which are free of charge. They don't give too much. Uh, let's say we cannot uh, put into the programs uh, most of the variables. Uh, <clears throat> some countries, uh, or in some countries, they don't have at all. But I will uh, take the only the 10 uh, first countries, uh, UK with 24 uh, softwares and four free softwares, Canada 18 with nine free software, uh, Germany uh, 15 with seven software, and they have many uh, good uh, feature uh, compared to some of the American one. Uh, Sweden, they have 14. Uh, among this, there is four free software numbers. Uh, France, 11. 
no one in France, no one is free, everything is paid. So, uh, and uh, Australia, 10, uh, three softwares are free, Swiss, Switzerland, seven and uh, zero also are free. Uh, uh, as a uh, result, uh, when I checked with the same uh, with the same building, with the same uh, utility uh, service, with the same price, uh, energy consumption, I found that uh, as a conclusion that uh, Equest Energy Simu Quick Simulation Tools is uh, much closer and the results to uh, the recorded the real results. Uh, I wish uh, that I had, uh, uh, let's say, uh, explain some of them. And uh, I wish uh, that uh, our professor will give some questions. Thank you very much, uh, professor. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, presentation. And uh, also, is there any question? Pardon? Is there any question uh, for participants? Uh, no, no. I, I'm waiting for questions so about software from you yeah, yes, yes, or yes. from our colleagues. Ah, I, okay. I worked a lot on Equest. I checked the others. Uh, because when we are using one software, some of the so softwares, they ask uh, about, for example, number of occupants or uh, type of heating systems. The others, they don't say about it at all. And, the, and the, both of them, they give uh, a value for uh, simulation, uh, simu uh, simulated value. So uh, I can answer much more about Equest than uh, about other. Okay, thank you very much again, Professor. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay. Thirdly, uh, Dr. Melik Ziya Akut, Yakut from Turkey. Melik. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much. And I am very happy to see uh, you and uh, today uh, I will present our the last uh, works. And uh, first of all, I am really sad for this uh, pandemic process. I want to meet with uh, you to face to face the, at the same places, but today we, uh, we have a great problems on the uh, earth and the world. And I hope the, the human beings will be solved the, these problems with uh, science and technology as soon as possible. And uh, the next year, we're planning this organization at the Portugal, and I hope we will meet uh, to face to face, uh, but we will see, time will say. And today, uh, I will make a pre uh, my presentation, our presentation, <coughs> and uh, uh, I, I will uh, show this, uh, our presentation with uh, uh, shortly. And uh, the, our project, it's about the, the effects of the COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak on global and uh, Turkey energy consumption and the environment. And this is my agenda. Uh, today, uh, our, my presentation is the two big part. One is the first part is the pandemic process and the second part is the uh, this uh, process is the energy results, how it's... And today we live the pandemic process and uh, this is the um, really hard uh, days we live. And uh, our presentation about the, how has had the pandemic process impact on the Turkey's energy consumption and the environmental impact. We have a four part on this uh, works, uh, the energy sector, energy consumption, air quality, and the global warming. So you know that today we live a great pandemic process. Uh, uh, it, start, it started uh, in the December 2019, uh, the beginning uh, at the China, and after the, the China declare 
World, uh, World Health Organization declared a pandemic uh, on the March 11, and uh, uh, the Turkey, the first uh, COVID cases have seen on uh, 10 of the March, and the sanctions imposed by the Turkish government have restricted the physical movements and the contacts of the Turkish citizens. And after uh, today, we see the results of this uh, problem. Uh, and this problem is really dramatically affected the world humans. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we will uh, discuss the energy consumption of pandemic process, especially. And uh, the energy consumption has increased incrementally each year, depending on living conditions, population, and the government policies. Today, the big problems to uh, our world is the, the high population levels of the human. And uh, this, this new population wants more energy. And we have to support this energy uh, with the clean and the sustainable. For this reason, we need a great and a strong uh, energy politics about these pro problems. Otherwise, we, we, we didn't solve the, our problems uh, easily. And at this pandemic process, uh, when we turn to pandemic process, uh, we uh, have a different uh, table on this area because the all energy consumptions is the decreased. Uh, the world energy sector has never experienced it before, uh, like these mm -hmm. problematic eras. And uh, uh, many of uh, all sources and the countries have been affected this process. And the uh, world energy consumption in 2020 has decreased the six, uh, seven uh, times faster compared to energy consumption in the 2009. And this is the, uh, there was a 20% uh, uh, ratio drop in the energy investment of uh, about uh, four, uh, $400 billion uh, during the epidemic process. And uh, 3 million employers were laid off in the energy sector in the first um, six months. And when we, when I uh, now we, we uh, I show you the oil uh, uh, ratios is the really dramatically is decreased, the, the and uh, uh, after these tables uh, we we saw that uh, a lot of places is the uh, to change it uh, with uh, with the coal also in the same positions the the environment now is the better. Uh, when we uh, didn't use the uh, coal and uh, oil too much. And uh, this is the great news for the environment process. But uh, uh, otherwise, uh, and, uh, otherwise uh, on the other hand, uh, the, 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 especially the uh, oil and the coal uh, subject is too important for the big countries and the, some of the producers, especially is to affect it on these the problems. And, uh, 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 and now you, you see that the renewable energy parameters, uh, the renewable energy is the, uh, increased uh, because the, the governments guaranteed the uh, renewable energy purchase. Uh, therefore, the increase in the renewable energy will continue in the upcoming periods. And uh, it's uh, very interesting, but uh, this is only the short uh, era uh, ratios, and after it will be turned back. Uh, this, is the, this is the main problems of us. And here is the, our problematic uh, gases and uh, uh, problematic uh, values. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to, yes. And uh, here the left side is the PM10 values. Uh, in, at this era is the most of uh, popular is the European uh, maps uh, and the uh, part of the north of the uh, Africas. And the, the other uh, one is the ozone um, levels. And the next one is the NO2. 
And the uh, uh, last one is the, uh, the total ozone. Um, uh, this is the uh, satellite image, image, and uh, you can see the difference uh, on the only uh, uh, eight days. After eight days, uh, after uh, six days, later, it's really different. And uh, now, uh, how is the affected uh, uh, the Turkey? The Turkey has proven to be a powerful energy infrastructure uh, because no houses, no companies, and no institutions remain without the electricity or and the natural gas during the pandemic process. And uh, during the pandemic process, the course of the energy crisis in Turkey, it was in the three stages. The first one, the energy demand and consumption were uh, decreased, uh, so the, the similar of the other countries, and the payments were disrupt, uh, disrupted and the cash flow was disrupted also. And uh, the, finally, the third one, the customers' relations have changed to, to, to totally uh, digitalize it. And uh, uh, the Turkey at this era uh, make uh, some exploration uh, about uh, to find the uh, hydrocarbon sources. And the decrease in the crude uh, oil prices on the global scale unit had a positive impact on Turkey. And uh, because during uh, the outbreak, uh, cheap petroleum was stored in the refineries by Turkey. And this opportunity in the short term was a positive development for Turkey. Uh, but it's uh, not a stable position uh, for the future. And the, another effect of the pandemic process for Turkey, uh, it's a big part of the uh, approximately a seven uh, ratio, uh, seven percent ratio of the world oil consumption occurs in the air aviation industry. And the Turkey is the most popular sector uh, about uh, this uh, subject. And due to the aviation industry in terms of size and geographical location of the transport sector is an important uh, base in Turkey and were uh, affected significantly negative in this process. And the many countries is also affected, especially the Gulf, Gulf countries also. And the, the, another part is the, the normalization policy to be data uh, to Chinese, uh, China. And uh, when the China is the normalization, um, the other countries to change the economies is very differently. And uh, the, for example, many countries uh, looking for a different uh, producer, uh, except the China in this era, and the Turkey is a, a really great chance on this part, but we, we, we will see the next uh, time uh, what, 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 what was the difference. And uh, uh, where are the energy policies in the rescue packets? It's really important things on this part. And uh, many countries and uh, Turkey also preparing large amount of the uh, economic resource package. And um, this, uh, the size of this package is currently around uh, uh, $20 trillion. And there are the three important parameters uh, for the Turkey and Turkish uh, energy policy. And the first one is the energy efficiency. And the second one is the acceleration of the renewable energy investments. And the third one, uh, rehabilitation of the electricity networks. And uh, the most important common feature of these three parameters is a labor intensive, intensive policy. For this reason, the employment will be uh, provided by preventing the increasing layoffs in the energy sector. Here is the two graphs uh, about the Turkish industrial production monthly and annually uh, results. It's really dramatically the negative, and it's about um, 30, uh, 30 uh, percent ratio. And uh, for this reason, the effect of this uh, the the Turkish uh, the Turkey energy production decreases the month and annually approximately uh, negative uh, values, 
And uh, here is the, you see, you saw that the electricity production is values. Normally it starts uh, uh, to uh, up to uh, here, uh, increase it normally. But uh, when they start the um, pandemic process and it's turned to uh, differently and the, the, the production is increased. And uh, st still there is a affected, uh, there is affected, uh, uh, still affected uh, this production number. And the conditions, uh, the overall, the energy consumption decreases, but only it increases in domestic use because everybody at the home and uh, and after and uh, uh, there were there have been uh, unexpected decreases in the emission values in the world. The biggest reasons for the decrease in the emissions are coal and the oil consumptions and oil consumptions, and uh, there have been a recovery in the ozone layer due to the decreased emissions. The economic packages, rescue packages, is very important for the normalization and the predictability and uh, predictability of the sustainable energy policies. And uh, finally, the right energy policy should be always consistent uh, with the energy efficiency, electrical daily life, systems, energy storage, green hydrogen energy, and long-term energy climate sustainability. And uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for this presentations and this conference. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zia. Uh, ex very excellent uh, presentation. Uh, is there any question? Distinguished participants, is there any question? No question. Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, Professor Utlu. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, from uh, Professor Malik's uh, presentation just now, we can say that uh, one of the silver lining of uh, COVID-19 is that uh, we can say that the earth is, we've, we've sort of like given the chance for, for the earth to have a rest. Am I yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So, yes, yes. We abs absolutely agree uh, to, to, to your uh, opinion. <laughs> yes, really. They, they, this is the, the a, a, a opportunity for the uh, humans <laughs> and for Earth. Uh, how is the normal? Is the is, uh, how is the normal in for the Earth? Otherwise, we have always used this the the, the, the problematic uh, energy fuels. And after, how is the result? For this reason, sometimes I say that. Uh, this is the big uh, problems for the mechanical engineering uh, engineers because they always advise to more uh, efficiently uh, uh, fuels. For this reason, always the solution is the oil. Uh, and now we have a really bad situations, and uh, we, <laughs> we understood uh, how is the decision is the wrongly. We have to find the clean and sustainable. Uh, efficiently energy uh, sources. Otherwise, we always find the uh, big problems on the earth. Thank you very much for your advice. And, yeah. uh, Thank you very much again. Uh, okay. Lastly, uh, Dr. Hasila Jerimi from Malaysia with presentation about an innovation semi-transparent thin thin PV glazing with vacuum insulated layer. Okay. Okay, everything is depend on Halisila Jeremy. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? All right, okay, Professor Utlu, can you see my slide? 
Yes, yes, everything yes. is good. Okay. All right, okay. All right, uh, thank you very much and a very good afternoon. Well, actually, it's already night here in Malaysia. It's already uh, almost my bedtime, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm very happy uh, to be able to see uh, Professor uh, Utlu today. And um, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank Professor Utlu and the organizer uh, for inviting me to give a talk uh, in today's conference. Uh, I'm Hasila. And currently, I am working as a lecturer at a Solar Energy Research Institute uh, in uh, Malaysia, uh, in Mal uh, National University of Malaysia. Uh, but before this, uh, I work at Nottingham University in the UK uh, for four years. And that is where I met uh, with Professor Zafir Utlu because we used to have a project together with Turkey. Uh, but it was only for a few months. But yeah, it was a very good, um, uh, it, I feel very uh, honored to, to know him. Uh, and then uh, today, uh, I've decided to give a talk uh, on a project that I work on when I was in Nottingham because uh, this uh, project is related to the theme of, the, of today's conference. Okay, uh, so basically uh, in my presentation today, I will give a brief introduction on the topic, uh, what motivates uh, us to propose the idea, and then I will present a bit about the design concept and a bit a technical aspect of the manufacturing of the of the PVBG or of the PV glazing, and finally a, a bit on the the findings uh, from the research. Okay, so what uh, motivates us to uh, to carry out the research? Uh, okay. All right, so basically uh, building insulation uh, is very important to reduce energy consumption. Uh, and one of the most important property of a building insulation is the U value, because U value reflects how much heat can be transmitted into or outside the building, depending on the, the temperature uh, in the building and also the temperature uh, of the ambient. So uh, the lower the U value, meaning that uh, the better the, the insulation property uh, of the building. Uh, this is an example of a high-rise building being insulated by an insulation layer. Okay. Uh, in our case, uh, we are interested to investigate um, the application of a semi-transparent thin film PV glazing because this type of uh, PV glazing not only be able to generate power, but it can also give artificial lighting into the building. Uh, unfortunately, one of the issues with semi-transparent thin film PV glazing is its U value, which is comparable to the typical uh, single glazing, which is about four to six watt per meter squared per Kelvin, and at about approximately six millimeter thick. Um, uh, usually, uh, for building integrated photovoltaic application, um, uh, the semi-transparent thin film PV is integrated with double glazing and it will give U value between 2.5 to 2.8, but it comes with a total thickness between uh, 20 to 28 millimeters, which is quite thick uh, for, for, for the glazing. So uh, a better idea if we could introduce vacuum to reduce the heat transfer in the air gap because what will um, the only heat transfer that will involve uh, will be only the heat transfer by radiation. Um, and we can uh, omit the heat transfer by convection because of the less presence of air particles or what we call that um, almost negligible amount of air particles uh, between uh, the vacuum glazing. So what happened is that um, the U value okay, of the the PV vacuum glazing is expected to reach less than two watt per meter square per Kelvin. Um, and the highlight here is that the thickness, here we can reduce the thickness of the thin film PV glazing um, with the vacuum layer down to eight to 12 millimeter thick in comparison to the double glazing. Okay, uh, right. So, um, okay, basically uh, the aim of the research that has been conducted was to investigate a potential of innovative design of thin film PV glazing, uh, which is insulated with vacuum layer called PVBG. Okay, so the approach that we had taken they include the design development of the PVBG. We did a bit of modeling, and then um, we have introduced a novel manufacturing technique 
And finally, we had done um, a lab scale prototype testing. Okay, uh, a bit on the design concept of the PVBG. All right. Uh, well, in general, uh, the tail film PV glazing comprises of two layers of glass. Uh, one layer is the low e coated glass, and the other layer is the thin film PV layer. So in between the glass layer is a vacuum gap at approximately 0.2 millimeter gap. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, I think I missed one slide because there was one slide where I show um, this semi-transparent thin film PV uh, at different colors, but I'm not sure where, where did the slide go. All right, basically uh, the semi-transparent thin film PV glazing can, uh, can come in various colors, which reminds me of uh, Professor uh, Punto, uh, Pinto uh, presentation just now. Okay, because uh, it has different kind of colors for this type of semi-transparent uh, PV glazing, which I believe that uh, different colors has been coated on the semi-transparent thin film PV uh, for a reason. Okay, uh, other than aesthetic value, maybe there's uh, other reason related to energy like Professor Pinto mentioned just now. Okay, but basically in our research, we are focusing on this type of thin film PV and we introduce a, a vacuum layer. Um, so, and the vacuum layer in the in the middle of um, of the, the the glass between the two glasses. Okay, what happened is that the, the the vacuum level at that point is around 0.1 pascal. So in order to prevent the glasses from collapsing, what we did is we introduced um, a support layer. Okay, um, in our case. Okay, uh, in our case we have introduced the use of material called aerogel alloy. Okay, so because this aerogel uh, alloy um, has a strong uh, properties and at the same time, it has a thermal conductive value of 0 0.032 only. Okay, what happened is that usually in a vacuum glazing, uh, researchers use stainless steel material in order to become the support structure for the vacuum glazing, but um, stainless steel has U value, which is about 20 watt per meter square per Kelvin. So by introducing um, uh, a support pillars of lower U value, which is, um, which is very low U value, uh, we, our hypothesis is that it will help us to reduce uh, the amount of the heat transfer by conduction through the support pillars. Okay, uh, so basically our thin film PVVG not only have a vacuum layer, that can reduce U value. It also can produce a solar power uh, using the thin film PV layer. And we also have introduced the use on non evaporable uh, getter to further reduce the pressure level. And uh, the highlight here is that the thickness of the thin film PVBG is only like approximately 11.4 millimeters in total. So it is much, much uh, thinner in comparison to. Um, uh, the PV glass with double glazing or with triple glazing. Okay, so our hypothesis is basically that uh, the use of PV vacuum will reduce heat loss and heat load significantly due to the enhanced um, insulation properties. So this is um, like a graphical representation of um, the infrared images of a building Okay, of a facade with a vacuum PV glass and with double glazing. So, uh, because the, the idea is new, so we, we have to identify uh, a method um, to, to develop or to manufacture our thin film PVBG. So in order to do that, uh, we have employed low temperature manufacturing method because, um, well, in this case, low temperature, meaning that it is in the range below 200 degrees Celsius. Why? Because typically uh, the manufacturing of uh, vacuum glazing would require temperature as high as uh, 400 to 600 degrees Celsius. But in our case, because we are incorporating a PV layer into the element of the vacuum glazing, so we have to consider low temperature in the manufacturing process. So in our case, uh, we have introduced the use of two types of indium base alloy with different melting temperature. So basically the use of indium base alloy um, is not 
It's not new. It has been used to create hermetic seal in vacuum back in 1952. Uh, it is because in high vacuum situation, materials like silicon adhesive would outgas and degrade the vacuum layer. And in fact, uh, let me share my experience. When we were in the manufacturing process of this uh, pink film PBBG, we really had a lot of trouble uh, in making sure that the outgassing uh, in, in between the glass layer did not happen. It was, um, uh, it was very, very challenging process and it took us almost a year to finally come up with the prototype. So uh, in our case, uh, we have used Okay, so basically, uh, sorry. So basically uh, the, the manufacturing method, okay, uh, include uh, three important steps, which is seal, evacuate, and seal again. So basically we use two different types of indium alloy of different temperature. Okay, one of them is at 156 degrees Celsius to create the, the seal around uh, the, the PV glazing and also the, the glass uh, layer. Okay, and, and in order to apply the thin film, uh, the sorry, the indium alloy on the glass, we have to use an ultrasonic soldering um, uh, tool. And then uh, we evacuate the, the glass layers so that we will create the hermetic seal around the glass. And then, um, and then we will put that, uh, sorry, uh, and then we will put the glass together with uh, a cover on the hole uh, in a vacuum oven. So what happened is that in the vacuum oven, uh, the pump out process will happen. And at the same time, uh, the, the, um, the pump out hole will be sealed by the indium alloy at temperature, which is at 120. So the idea is that because the sealing uh, temperature around the edges is higher than the temperature of sealing for the hole, okay? So what happened is that when we place it in the vacuum oven, the, the indium alloy around the edges will not melt, okay? Will not melt, but the only, um, uh, the only indium alloy that will melt is the one that is covering the pump out hole. So once, we, um, once the vacuum oven is set at a very low vacuum level and pump up all the air in between the glass layer, Okay, and then we will turn off the oven okay, and we will still let the vacuum, of, uh, the vacuum pump on. All right, so in the process of cooling, what happened is that um, the seal, uh, sorry, the hole will be sealed by the endium alloy of 120. But at the same time, we already have created a vacuum uh, condition uh, in between the glass layer. Okay, so what are the findings? Right, so basically here are the findings. So we have a thin film PV glazing with vacuum layer. Okay, so in order to, to detect, okay, to first, so basically when we take, uh, it's like taking a, a cake out of from the oven. So when we, when we take the, the, the glazing prototype from the oven, so to, for us to identify or to detect whether there is a vacuum between the glass layers or not, we had to check uh, the presence of the vacuum. And it's, uh, I found it very interesting, okay, because once I put it under the light, you can clearly see, okay, uh, as I highlight there, okay, um, you can clearly see uh, the, the strain or st uh, the strain mark around the support pillars. And the reason of to that is because, okay, because the atmospheric pressure outside, which is almost, uh, which is at 10 to power 5 Pascal, is pressing the two vacuum layers together. Okay, so that shows that what, what is happening is that the, the support, uh, the, the, um, the pillars, okay, which are the support structure for the, the glass is being, uh, it can feel the pressure. And that's the reason we can see the strain mark around the pillars. And to do that, we have compared the strain mark with the commercialized uh, vacuum glazing. And it clearly shows that, um, yes, there's a vacuum in between the glass. Let me tell you, to get that vacuum is, is definitely not an easy process. It was like, I'm, I'm not sure like how many trial and error. Uh, but one thing for, and another thing to make sure is that if there is no vacuum, 
as soon as you tilt the PV glazing, you will see that the support pillars will start to drop. The reason is because the atmospheric, uh, the, the pressure between the glass and outside is about the same. So nothing is pressing, it's nothing is pressing uh, the pillars uh, uh, in, inside the glass. That's the reason. Okay, so uh, in order to, to measure uh, the performance, okay, to get uh, the U value, we have designed and developed our own calibrated hot box, which we designed and developed based on ISO uh, one, if I'm not mistaken, one two five six one two five six seven uh, standards. All right. So basically, this calibrated hot box was designed based on uh, the the standards, and uh, we have uh, used uh, a free refrigerant uh, heat pump in our case because we have used thermoelectric heat pump instead of um, a chiller. So what happened is that we managed to get a cold temperature as low as three degrees Celsius and the hot temperature in the hot box uh, as high as 50 degrees Celsius just by using a thermoelectric unit. So we able to create a temperature difference between the hot box and the cold box for us to be able to measure the uh, transmittance value through the glass. All right, so this is an example, okay, because the, the box has been calibrated. So this is an example of uh, a thermal performance report. Okay, and then from here, okay, and we also managed to, um, to find out or to compare the performance of the PVBG with the vacuum glazing, with the uh, thin, film PV glazing, uh, thin film PV glazing on its own. So we can see clearly that with the vacuum layer, there's a huge temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side. Meanwhile, uh, for the um, thin film PV glazing, the temperature difference is very small. Other than that, we also have a thermal imaging uh, image of, of the glazing when we are um, exposing one exposing one side with a hot temperature and the other side with a cold temperature so you can clearly see that um, at the center here the we get a blue color here and the reason uh, because um, there is where the vacuum layer is but then as it ap approaching the edges what happened is that the temperature increases because uh, towards the edges uh, that is where we place or we have the the sealing uh, the seal of the vacuum glazing. So the seal itself has a certain thermal conductive value. So the heat transfer when it comes towards the edges uh, increases. That's the reason. All right. Okay. Uh, so in total, uh, we have made a three lab scale prototype. Okay, and then after that, the project finishes. And we were trying to apply for extra funding at that time, but then I have already been transferred to a new project. Okay, uh, so basically we made three uh, prototypes. As you can see here, that um, there's an improvement in the U value as uh, we are trying, we, as we are improving the techniques from time to time. Okay, and finally, at the final prototype that we get has a U value at the center, like around 1.36 uh, watt per meter squared per Kelvin. All right, so uh, now we have come to the discussions and conclusions. All right, uh, so basically uh, the lab scale proof of concept prototype of thin film PV vacuum glazing has been successfully manufactured using low temperature method with overall a thickness of 11.5 millimeters. Well, definitely the presence of vacuum can be visually detected. But nevertheless, I have to admit that when we compare it to the commercialized vacuum glazing, the U value, uh, I mean, like for the, for the other prototypes, it can still be considered high for a vacuum glazing unit. Okay, the reason could be because of the presence of moisture okay, during the manufacturing. Okay, and also the size of the sample, which is at 300 times 300 millimeters, Okay, meaning that um, there is a heat transfer, uh, uh, so the, the heat transfer at the conduction uh, uh, from the edges is quite significant. But nevertheless, in comparison to a double glazing unit, okay, at 20 millimeters thick, we can consider that uh, our prototype is still in general has low U value 
uh, with overall thickness only 11.5 millimeters. Okay, so uh, building thermal insulation is very important. Okay, uh, higher value meaning that poor thermal insulation. So we have introduced a vacuum layer to improve U value of uh, thin film PV glazing because BIPV with semi-transparent thin film PV glazing provides artificial lighting and at the same time it can generate power. Okay, so we can conclude from that project, okay, that the promising U value implies its range of potential application, but it still can be improved um, uh, by improving uh, the manufacturing method of um, uh, the development of the PVVG. Because I still remember uh, during uh, my final presentation of this project, um, we, uh, we have suggested to the funder that if we can have um, a robotic ultrasonic soldering material, for example, whereby we can introduce the vacuuming process at the same time, what we can get is a, is, is a glazing unit um, with a better uh, vacuum presence uh, in between the glass layer. So last but not least, uh, so this project was uh, funded by Innovate UK and it was actually a project uh, between uh, Nottingham University and our partners in China. Right, so the, here are some of the pictures of, of the partners, okay? Right, uh, but uh, before I before I finish my, my talk, I would like to share a bit about um, the place where that I work right now so that maybe we can create a networking after this. So basically I work at Solar Energy Research Institute at National University of Malaysia. Okay, uh, the research areas of our institute covering various type of uh, solar energy research. Okay, we have, um, uh, we have different kind of facilities that includes uh, low energy architecture, manufacturing of photovoltaic cells, different kind of cells, the first, second, third generation of solar cells, uh, thermoelectric, thermoelectric generation. Okay, these are all the things that we uh, research at uh, Solar Energy Research Institute. Okay, uh, also our university is the world leading university in the research of photovoltaic cells, solar power generation, and photovoltaic thermal research, producing papers which are cited more than the, the double world levels. Okay, so um, I am. I would like to take this opportunity to um, uh, invite uh, any of you here who will be interested, maybe to further your study or to create a collaboration uh, in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Hasila. Uh, yes. Especially, uh, this is a very excellent uh, presentation and also very uh, different project. Thank you very much again. Is there Thank any you. question? Yeah, I have uh, one question. Yes. yes. Yeah, this is Emre from Turkey. And uh, thank you for uh, presentation, Professor. Uh, oh, I'm not a professor yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe, okay, maybe maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last year we did a, a similar uh, thin film photovoltaic study with cadmium. Uh, we were used to cadmium chloride and uh, tellurium dioxide. Okay. We were able to reach the correct homogenization at uh, 380 Celsius degrees. And okay. 100 uh, Celsius degrees is a little low for this process. Uh, how did you uh, acute this? Uh, how you able this? Uh, 380 degrees. Um, like I mentioned just now, uh, I didn't use temperature of 380. The material that I used, uh, I, you're talking about sealing the edges of the vacuum glazing, right? Am I right? Yeah, right. Yes, okay. So the material that I used in my research, uh, it is called indium alloy. And that indium alloy, it has a temperature, uh, it has a melting temperature of 156 degrees. Okay? Yeah. 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 So it, it, it didn't even reach 200 degrees because it's okay. not, yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there is a vacuum, right? There is a vacuum. Yes, there's a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how much vacuum you use? Okay, all right. It's like this. To, to measure the vacuum layer between the glass is not easy. And it's not easy because um, we need a special method to do that. 
so we basically we were not able to measure um, experimentally the vacuum layer. Okay, but what we did when we when we carry out the experiment, okay, uh, the vacuum level inside the the vacuum oven itself goes down to ten to power minus six pascal. Okay. Okay, if, yeah, so if atmospheric pressure is 10 to power 5, the vacuum that we use is down to 10 to power minus 6 pascal. And then uh, what happened is that uh, when we test our panel, what we did was we, we estimate what is the pressure level uh, by comparing, uh, sorry, uh, by comparing the performance uh, with the theoretical modeling. Do you get what I mean? Like because when, when we model when we model the, 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 the vacuum glazing, we will be able to see that when we have the temperature difference this much, what will be the pressure level inside the glass? Mm -hmm. But first, you have to first validate uh, your your model. And how to do that? You you will need to compare with a vacuum glazing that is already commercially available in the market. You know what I mean? So basically, the, the, the commercial vacuum glazing is used as the, what do you call it, uh, a calibration panel uh, to validate your model. Okay, and then from there, when you have your own panel, you can use that theoretical model to see what is the pressure, to, to, to predict what will be the pressure level between the glass layer. Okay, okay. thank you for your answer with uh, experiences. Thank you. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. Is there any question? Uh, I have no question, but I, I want to say something uh, about this subject. Uh, thank you very much, Hasida. I like your uh, works and your also research center is really um, fantastic for us. And uh, the, Mr. Emre uh, is uh, my doctorate student and we work about the Tim Film project on the master thesis uh, on his. And maybe we can work together for the next times. And yeah. uh, we are so happy to work with you. OK, thank you very much, Professor. Yes. Is there any question? No question. Uh, thank you very much uh, again, Hasila. Yes. And uh, maybe uh, next year, uh, we will uh, meet Portugal. Uh, with Professor Pinto, okay. Uh, it will be a pleasure to manage it for you here. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe face to face. Yes. Pinto, inshallah. Yes. Yes. inshallah. yes. 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 Also, uh, again, uh, thank you very much for your support to our conference. All other, uh, all the participants. Also, uh, we. Uh, we are very happy to uh, your support, uh, speakers and uh, attendance. And uh, lastly, next year I will be uh, I will meet uh, Portugal uh, face to face. Okay. Okay. It will be fantastic if it will be true. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much again.